Welcome to my lecture online. Now for something a bit harder. We're trying to find the line where two planes that intersect meet. So that represents a line. We're trying to find the equation of that line. How do we do that? Well, here are the two equations of the two planes. And the way to go about it is to solve those two equations simultaneously. After all, where the two equations meet, that's where the line is. So that's where x, y, and z should be the same for both planes at the same time. Now, of course, there's going to be an infinite number of combinations of that which make up a line. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to find y in terms of x, solving those two equations simultaneously by eliminating z. And then we're going to solve y in terms of z by eliminating x. Of course, you can do a different combination of them. But that's one of the ways in which we can approach it. So let's do that. How do we eliminate z? Notice we have a positive z here and negative z there, so we can add the two equations together. So we get 4x minus 2y minus z is equal to 5. And so subtract the second equation from the first. We get x minus 4x, which is minus 3x. Oh, no, we don't want to subtract. We want to add, otherwise the z's don't cancel. So let's try that again. So we're going to add the two equations together because we want to cancel z. So x plus 4x, which is 5x, that would be minus y. Z's cancel out, which is equal to 6. So that means we end up with an equation where we have 5x minus y equals 6, or 5x minus 6 is equal to y. And then dividing both sides by 1, we can go ahead and write that. And you'll see in a moment why we did that because we want to put it into the general format of the equation of a line. Now we want to get rid of x. We want to eliminate x. So that means I can multiply this equation by minus 4. So we end up with taking that equation. Uh, let's see here. How do I do that? So I'm going to do it on the side here. So I have minus 4 times x plus y plus z is equal to 1. So I'm multiplying both sides of the equation by minus 4. We get minus 4x minus 4y minus 4z equals minus 4. And I can add that to the existing equation and that will get rid of the x. So minus 4x minus 4y minus 4z is equal to minus 4. Add the two together. The x's drop out. I get minus 6y and I get minus 5z is equal to 1. Okay, I want to solve this for y. So moving y across, I get uh, minus 5z minus 1 is equal to positive 6y. And now dividing both sides by 6, I get that. So now I have two equations where I have y in terms of x and y in terms of z. Now I can turn that into a single equation for a line. I can say that 5x minus 6 over 1 is equal to y, which is equal to 5, negative 5z minus 1 divided by 6. So notice that y is equal to this, and y is equal to this in terms of x in terms of z. Now I need to turn that into a legitimate equation for a line where I get x minus x sub naught over a equals y minus y sub naught over b equals z minus z sub naught over c. So I need to make this equation look like that. So here, on this one, I should divide both the numerator and the denominator by 5. If I do that, I get x minus 6 over 5 is equal to 1 over 5, which is equal to y minus 0 over 1. So that looks just like that. And then here, I'm going to divide both top and bottom by negative 5 because I want a positive z there. So I get, uh, divided by negative 5, I get z plus 1 over 5 divided by negative 6 over 5. So I divide the numerator by negative 5, I get z, I get a 1 fifth, and divide the denominator by negative 5, I get negative 6 over 5. So now notice that it looks a lot more like this. On the denominator, I have the coefficients of the vector which is parallel to the line. But I don't want fractions like this. So what I could do is I could say, well, I can come up with an equivalent vector by multiplying everything in the denominator by 5. 
So I, what I can do is I can say that the vector that's parallel, and I'm going to take vector 1, that is going to be equal to 1 fifth in the i direction, plus 1 in the j direction, minus 6 fifths in the k direction. Or if I multiply everything by 5, because I can do that, I can multiply that by a fixed number, so I get the parallel, I come up with a second parallel vector, which is going to be 1 in the i direction, plus 5 in the j direction, and that's going to be minus 6 in the k direction, and that's a much better perpendicular, no, parallel vector to the line. Okay, notice that I can put any vector in the denominator that's parallel to the line, and these are going to be the x, y, and z coordinates of a point on the line. So now finally I can come up with a legitimate equation in this particular format. I can write it as x minus 6 over 5 divided by 1 equals y minus 0 divided by uh, 5 equals, uh, let's see here, z plus 1 over 5 divided by uh, minus 6, minus 6. And there I have an equation where the two lines cross. In other words, that's the line that matches both equations. Now, to make sure we did it correctly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a point on the line based upon the equation here that the point on the line is going to be equal to 6 over 5, 0, and minus 1 over 5. Let me get out of the way so you can see that. So I found the x, y, and z coordinates of a point on the line. If I plug those into the original equation for both of the planes, that should match both planes. So we're going to check to make sure we did this correctly. So check. So for the first equation, we get x plus y plus z equals 1. Let's plug in the coordinates. So we have 6 over 5 plus y is 0, minus 1 over 5, is that indeed equal to 1? And you can see that 6 fifths minus a fifth, that's 5 fifths, so 5 fifths is indeed equal to 1, so that checks for that one. Now let's plug that into the second equation, see what we get. So we get 4x minus 2y minus z is equal to 5. Plug these uh, points in for x, y, and z, so we have 4 times 6 over 5, minus 2 times 0, minus, well, let's see here, uh, minus z, but z is a negative 5, so I go plus, uh, let me write it in the correct form. So minus, minus 1 over 5, is that indeed equal to 5? Let's check. So we have 24 over 5, plus 0, plus 1 over 5, is that indeed equal to 5? And sure enough, you see that 25 over 5 equals 5, so that checks as well. I took the point on the line and plugged into both equations for the plane and it satisfied both equations of the plane. So we're pretty sure that that's the correct value for the points on the line. And then of course the denominator, that is the vector that's parallel to the line, which should be perpendicular to the plane. So another thing that I could do to check to make sure the denominator is correct, I can take the dot product of the parallel vector and the perpendicular vector of one of the planes. So let's do that. I'm kind of running out of room. So I'm going to raise some of this a little bit so I can do one more check. So let's erase this. So I want to do one more check to make sure I got the value that is correct. I'm going to take the vector which is parallel of the line and take the dot product with the vector that's perpendicular to the plane. So parallel to the line, perpendicular to the plane, if that works out to be zero, then I know that I've got the correct denominator and the correct parallel line. Okay, so that would be equal to the parallel vector, that would be equal to 1, 5, and negative 6, and I have 1, 1, 1 for the perpendicular vector. So parallel would be 1, and I'm going to multiply the times the perpendicular vector, which is 1, plus parallel vector, which is 5, times the perpendicular vector, which is 1, and plus parallel vector, which is the negative 6, and multiply times the perpendicular vector, which is 1. All right, 
and that should equal zero if I get the correct value. So this is one plus five minus six is equal to zero, and that checks as well. In other words, I also checked that the parallel vector to the line that I get by taking these components, one, five, and negative six, is perpendicular to the perpendicular vector of this plane. Of course, I could do it one more time. I could do that and compare it to the perpendicular vector of that plane, but at this point, I'm pretty sure we've got the correct value, and that's how you find the equation of the line where two planes intersect. That's how it's done.